Welcome to Inside Auto Podcast, where we feature everyone and anyone you'd want to talk to in and out of the automotive industry. Ilana Shabta here, host of Inside Auto Podcast, where we interview top dealers, GMs, marketers, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders in and out of the automotive industry. Before we introduce today's guest, this episode is sponsored by FullPath.com. FullPath is the automotive industry's leading customer data and experience platform, CDXP. FullPath enables dealers to turn their first party data into lifelong customers by unifying siloed data sources and leveraging that data to create exceptional, hyper-personalized customer experiences. To learn more, visit FullPath.com. Today's guest is Sandy Zanino. Sandy, who I've gotten the pleasure of knowing over the years. Sandy, thank you for joining. Oh, thank you for having me. It's so great to be here. Yes, and I, I get to actually see you in two weeks at NADA. So I'm so yes, glad. and I always love spending time with you. There, yes, it, you as well. It'll be yeah. nice. And I'm sure we'll see all of our, everyone in the industry. It's like a little family. I can't wait. Um, Sandy, yes. you've been with the industry, the automotive industry for 25 years passionate about protecting profits through compliance programs, training people, process, uh, and you opened IAHR yes. in 2017. So it's been seven years. Yeah, it's been, I just did the it's been seven years, the seven wow, years. Wow, congratulations. You're hitting me. <laughs> no, it's amazing. I, I want to hear, I want to hear about it. I want to hear about the transition to entrepreneurship. Um, we know that anyone who's followed you, we know you're deeply passionate about diversity, uh, you know, inclusion. You're involved in a lot of different programs that we're going to talk about today. Um, and you like dancing. I, anyone who follows you on LinkedIn would know that you love dancing. So uh, any day is going to be a party with you. You know, I have this idea to do, to try and get like a, a, a what's it called? A flash mob. I would, yeah. I count me in. Count you in? Cause count I was me thinking in. this morning, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should do a video. There's a really simple dance. We should do it at NADA. I would love that. All right. Well, it's on then. I'm going to. We only I'm have like one week to practice. Anyway, I'm, I'm really serious. I've never been part of a flash mob. I want to be part of a flash mob so badly. Well, let's do. That's it. We're. Uh, let's it's, do it. It's, it's, we just got one well, there. We got to figure the place, and we need to Great. find how we're going to do the music. So. Okay, I'll leave that to you, and I'll just come with the <laughs> with the moves. <laughs> it's on. It's on. Yeah, I'm excited okay, so, for NADA. Yes, we're excited for NADA. Tell us a little bit. Let's go back though. How did you get okay. into automotive? And then I'd love to also know how you got into the the HR business and and just like what that's like, okay. been, what it's been like launching that. So. It, like many women that I hear from, I fell into automotive by accident. Yes. It was pure accident. I I was working for a, a commercial real estate appraiser, which is was very interesting work, actually, by the way. Um, and behind me, a dealer group, a dealer principal in that in the office right behind ours, had just opened their first corporate office. And me being me, I got to know people just in and out, right? And one day they asked me if I would consider taking on another role. And I talked to them, we interviewed, I said, I got to give them two weeks. They said, we'd like that. And, and that's really kind of where it started. I had no idea what I was getting into. Wow. And that role ended up, uh, they really, it was the wild automotive group. They, about a year and a half ago, they, oh, they yeah. Sold, yeah, they sold all their stores. Um, who did they sell to? Uh, the Florida stores uh, sold to Morgan and oh. all the Wisconsin stores are with Lithia. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that is, that that's the deal. You know, I'm still friends with Mark Wilde. Um, couldn't, I've never had a better boss. That's amazing. So just yeah, let me grow. a great way to enter the industry. Yeah, it really was. I mean, uh, I, um, I learned so much because what I ended up doing, I was his assistant, I ran the corporate office. So any communications from OEMs, you know, anything like that, I was, I had my, my experience is broad probably for an HR professional. However, how I got in, got to HR. I mean, I've always, I was always that employee who read the I nine, all the directions and you know, all of the, you have the in your blood. small print, right? Like all the small print, I read it. And I had always had an interest. And the way that it just kind of grew was I started with benefits because I was like, you know, I don't think people are getting their benefits when <laughs> on time or Cobra. 
And then I think what everybody realized, the office managers would send me, if something came and it was something to read, they sent it to me. Yeah. It's always right. good to have someone like that. I would say I'm the exact opposite. I would send everything to, to you. But, I, you know, and so, and, and by nature, I'm a person who likes to help people. Right. Yeah. I, right. So, and, and, and I love you with that. So. <laughs> And, and I love finding solutions, right? And, and I really just kind of fell in love with automotive, um, you know, and that's really my value as a consultant in, in retail in particular, is that I get it. I get what the sales managers are looking for. I get what, the, what Fixed Ops is doing. And I also get the, what employees are doing. I think my success in particular with Wild was about my, uh, my view of HR, which is customer service, which I don't think a lot of people uh, think of HR as customer service, but all of my, all of my customers are internal, right? Including the dealer, including the managers and the employees, right? And right. when you can create win, win, win situations, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's great. So you were there and then you ventured off to open up your your own practice, your own company. I was that after Wild or? After Wild in 2016, I was actually recruited with a larger group. And at this point I wanted, <clears throat> I was lured by the promises of, <laughs> and it, I had a ball. I will tell you this, I had a ball. I, I, one thing I love is learning. And for example, one of the things I got to do with this group, I spent a short time with them. Uh, but one of the things I got to do was go through an acquisition. And That's amazing. It was amazing. Um, I created an onboarding. I'm really proud of this. I, I created an onboarding for like 250 new, newly acquired wow. employees. We got them all onboarded in a day and a half, right? And they Incredible. had everything that they needed and it, it was pretty cool. Pay plan, like everything was done. Um, did you so, use, I mean, did you, you must have had certain, so, did you use any software to help you with that at the time? Excel. All manual, what? Well, pretty much all manual and folders. Wow. Um, you know, there, there, I mean, the DMS, uh, and in a lot of dealerships, it's still this way. You know, the DMS is the, 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 information system. Right. <clears throat> um, some organizations are using pay, the payroll HRIS system. Yeah. But we right. don't talk to each other. So everything's no. got to be in two places <laughs> anyway. So um, the same these days. Yeah, it was the, it was fun. It was a lot That's of fun. Incredible. That's incredible. You know, all the background screens done. Like there's a lot to uh, yeah. To an acquisition on the employee side, you know, making yeah. sure that that what if there's somebody that's out on FMLA, that's a big one, right? For the acquired employees, that transfers to the new, right. all of their time worked. Just because they're new employees doesn't mean that their FMLA clock starts over, meaning that they right, right. they don't have to work for a whole year again, right? Before they're eligible, so. It's, well, it's fun. It's nice because you know all the intricacies of this, so you can really help dealership groups and and really understand this and make sure that it's a smooth, whatever it is, transition, acquisition, whatever it might be. So it's just you know, how you, how you know in this. thinking about that, about what what helps make an acquisition a smooth transition, especially for the employees being acquired, is um, allying or allaying their fears. Right, because mm -hmm. they're scared, they're scared, and I think the the uh, communication with them before close, right, like before the close, um, is really really important. Letting them know who they're coming to work for, what's the value proposition of them, you know, uh, being acquired, and and how great it's going to be, right? Like <laughs> you need to go and be in a cheerleader for, uh, and and. And training. If there's a DMS, if you're changing DMSs, oh my gosh, I think my, my best advice for that is have, do training for at least a month, especially in service. Service will fall apart, right? Anyway, so 
No, I'll this is, it's great. I think also that's just like, it's, it's amazing because you're so embedded in the processes that it's not just about the people in HR. It's about actually how you can just operate at a, at a really smooth level. And I yeah. think that's something dealerships can really take advantage of when they talk to you. So it's great to hear that. Um, I know you're fun. also very passionate about diversity, inclusion. You're part of Wocon, um, Solera. Am I saying that correctly? Uh huh. Yeah, uh, I mentioned this to you. We're getting ready yeah. to announce. I can't give you Probably all the not. details. Okay. But it is, um, there is a, uh, a leadership program that we're getting ready to roll out for. And is that, Wocon. that's through Solera or Wocon? It's for Solera. They, they yeah. have, it's specific for Wocan. It's powered by Solera. Got right? it. So, um, and it's, it's going to be a six month program. I mean, it's going to be a really uh, amazing leadership program. It's going to touch on all different aspects of leadership. Um, there is a, uh, there's gonna be pre-work and homework. I mean, it's gonna be uh, pretty intense. And and I think that the the participants are, are, are just going to get a lot of value out of it. So we're That's pretty cool. excited about that. There's a lot of I, things happening with Wokan. Wokan. Uh, yeah, tell know. us a little bit about Wokan. Not everyone knows what Wokan is. Oh, yeah. well, well, Wocan, you can find Wocan at www.wocautonetwork.com. And um, Wocan is, was created by the four founders, uh, Carrie Wise, who many mm -hmm. of us know, um, Erica Tiffany Wells, who also many of us know, yep. Amanda Gordon, who many, every, the, they're, they're really, you know, well known, and Patrice Banks. Right. Um, and so it's a, a wide range, you know, Patrice uh, has a, a pretty amazing um, uh, shop, a, a, you know, like a mechanic shop in, in Philadelphia. Um, so we have an Amanda's retail, Carrie's on tech side, and yep. as we know, Erica is now a GM with okay. Walzer, right? So we have all, all different uh, spectrums and they got together uh, because there's not a place for women of color, right? Um, there's uh, a specific place. And women of color experience something different than something more, right? It's actually called intersectionality. There's a whole long story I could tell you about the, the, how that word was created. Um, but what, why are women of color? Because that was one of the pushbacks. Well, like, aren't we all women? right? From, from white women. Aren't we all women? Um, yes, we are. Uh, but women of color experience uh, a different level as far as because of race that is in there, right? We've all heard the tropes, the angry black woman. We've had, you know, um, and, and so one of the things about Wokan that I've always said, I was like, wow, because especially when ERGs, employee resource groups kind of became, uh, a thing, and there's a lot of them. <clears throat> I was like, wow, because automotive, find me an organization that has enough women of color to have an ERG. <laughs> like, they they just aren't. So Wocan Great can point. act as your, you know, like an industry ERG. And mm -hmm. I have been able to experience some of the most, as a witness, right, some of the most beautiful connections um, of not... I, one, I get to experience being the only one, which is not often, right? right. Unless I am at Wokan. And, um, and, and also watching the joy, the unspeakable joy that happens in a room when there's, you know, a hundred plus women of color together. They did an incredible job. So I'm really happy that you got to tell us a little bit about the organization. And then what is the connection to Solera? So we, uh, Wokan um, has a lot of sponsors, right? There are a lot of organizations. Wokan is a 503C, right? We, all of us that work, that do things for Wokan, we're all volunteer. Um, you know, so uh, Solera approached us and said, you know, with this idea. And we were like, yeah, let's do it, right? Like we have, Wokan's got a lot of sponsors. Cars.com is a sponsor, yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, some OEMs and are on board. Is is Wilkin do anything doing anything specific at NADA? Uh, no. Keep an eye out on social media. Okay. Uh, and and we'll be you know there there's a possibility that we're gonna you know that we'll have during the show at various uh, booths. Okay. Hey, there's. Yeah, great. I mean, it's a, it's a very powerful organization, so I think it is important for us to know where we can find you, how we can know more about it. Thank you for sharing that. And then you also spoke to me about um, the inclusion council that is happening. Oh, I miss man. It? that's the most exciting thing for me, and it's oh, not. Oh, let's talk about it. It it really is because um, and oh, I just got my first retail member, right? Amazing. Like amazing. Yeah, that's like so amazing. That it's, is. Congratulations. Um, the way that the council, uh, and it evolved, right? At first, it was going to be just like a round table. Um, and I at first thought it was just going to be vendors, right? Because when I first started, there was a retail round table. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of gone away. And and I guess what I've realized is, and and I have about twelve members. Woohoo! And it's funny. I think in uh, you know DEI has been so mischaracterized lately, uh, and and that's hard to combat. Sometimes I think even even those people who really believe that um, diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, shows results. Uh, sometimes stay quiet and want to be Switzerland, you know, um, especially in the yeah. environment that we're in. But, um, so, you know, I have 12 members or no 13 now counting my <laughs> counting, retail, counting the retail. retail. And it's really kind of evolved because in our, in our discussions, um, what, what we've come to realize and what I realized over the last few years, these, that inclusion is the solution to some, challenges that we collectively as an industry have been talking about since I've been around and since that that's 1998 turnover our ability to attract emerging especially emerging talent mm -hmm. and the gender gap right yep. let's just look at the gender gap we haven't moved in three years according to NADA it's 18.8 percent .8 women in retail like we haven't moved and we keep talking about it. And we keep talking about it. We keep throwing like spaghetti against the wall, hoping something sticks, you know, let, let's, let's, um, let's men let's do mentorship programs. Let's help women understand how to navigate the industry. Um, yeah, let's launch women in automotive and have a conference. I yes. Let's, which are, are all great things. I'm not right. saying don't do those things. Right. At all. But it's not right. worth it. <clears throat> let's move the 18% up though. But if it hasn't changed anything, we right. are, it is the definition of insanity. Yeah. Doing the same things over and over and over, expecting a different result. Yeah. And so I guess what I've come to realize is that those three things are symptoms. And yeah. what they're symptoms of are a collective um, inability to really embrace inclusion and what that means. You know, I read something recently that just really kind of blew me away. Um, and it is that exclusion neurologically, the neurological response to being excluded is the same as physical pain. Like who wants to do that to anybody? Right. right? right. No, who wants right. to hurt someone in, in that way? Um, you know, so I think that there are certain things that, that we can do first. We have to look at the data and come to understand that this, this really is true. Yeah. Right. So the council, hopefully that's the basis of the council, right? That we want to work on these things and bring inclusion into the industry collectively there. We have some plans for, um, doing some research, which, you know, I hope can happen. I'd love to find some sponsors to help me do this. Right. Because, um, you know, some things that I want to do, some are simple on the simpler side, like for example, uh, do some, uh, blind resumes, right? Set the mm -hmm. job ad goes out. I send out yep. two exactly the same resume yeah. with different names, the name. maybe yep. different schools, 
right? Um, and see, and, and just do some of that research. I'd love to find a way. Yeah. Because this hurts us. Yeah. This hurt, uh, car dealers do really, really well, right? We do great, but the good is the enemy of the best. And yeah. um, it's so easy to not have to think about it, right? It's not an imperative for yeah. dealers. Totally. So you're, um, you la you're launching this. Yeah, it's it. April will be one year. Uh, I started last year at NABA running around with QR codes and got had a whole bunch of uh, exploratory meetings and had enough people who were interested and joined up to go ahead and do it. I mean, it's you know, things I, like this that will actually bring the change. So, I mean, I hope so. I really hope so. I mean, yeah. I'm not expecting to change the whole world. Um, just maybe, just maybe, maybe if I can make one little dent, then I think um, I've done my job in this world. Yes. Well, I agree. And I'm seeing it. And thank you for sharing it with us here today on the Inside Auto Podcast. You're doing so much. I mean, really. And you're having such an impact on how people are feeling and, and you know, the type of inclusion that we want to see in automotive. So thank you so much for that work. And thanks for sharing it with us today. Thank and you, you will be at NADA. So I will be there. I'm talking amazing. at NADA amazing. about... Yeah, about inclusion, actually. Amazing. And, um, you know, if anybody wants to get in touch with me uh, for my consulting offerings, mm -hmm. you know, what I do is, um, you know, it's a, a, the, the best, my favorite thing to do is IHR on demand, right? And that's when I help coach your HR. It's not designed uh, for dealers who have a, a seasoned HR professional. Right. Right. It's easy as one, two, three. We go through your compliance a little bit more intense for the first couple of months. And then I just monthly uh, work with your who's on the ground, probably yep. your HR payroll <laughs> person or your controller. Right. Yeah, but it sounds incredible. I mean, that's, no. that's, that's a very great resource for dealers to know about. And you obviously know your stuff, so it can be extremely helpful for them. Yeah, I know. I know a little bit enough. I know enough to be dangerous, I guess, is, you know, I also know when to ask for help. That's really yeah. important. That's great. Well, we know how to find you. And on LinkedIn, I know you're very active. Sandy Zanino, thank you again. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. And for those listening, Inside Auto Podcast, you can find us on InsideAutoPodcast.com and all your favorite streaming channels. Thank you so much again. Bye, Sandy. Bye. Thanks for listening to Inside Auto Podcast. Check out our other episodes with top entrepreneurs and industry leaders.